Welcome to D-Lab. Today, this is a special request video. My subscribers have emailed me several times and said, hey, could you just walk us through a Fender Champ circuit and show us what the voltages should be, what's normal, what's not. So here it is, the Fender Champ Wellness Check by D-Lab. Here we go. For this video, we're going to concentrate on the Champ AA764 schematic. Right, so obviously you would need the amp. Then you need a meter, and it's always nice to have a schematic. These schematics are free on the web. In this case, I'm on Watts Tube Audio site. They provide the layout plus the schematics for these amps. So it's a piece of cake. So let me show you some basic things you need to do first, and then we'll buzz out the amp. Before we get started. I need to talk about something that's very important and it's called safety all right you're working on an amplifier that has a potential of four to five hundred volts so if you do something wrong and come in contact with that it can kill you all right so here's some recommendations first off make sure your workbench is non-conductive like wood or in my case I've got a rubber pad on top of mine don't use a metal bench because your chassis is going to contact that bench and now the entire work surface is at that potential which increases your chance of getting shocked all right next thing take off the watch and the ring now I can't get mine off so I'm going to violate that rule so that you're not contacting circuitry across say your watch band and BAM right get it off of there next thing try to work with one hand so you'll see in this video I'm going to ground my meter lead to the chassis and then I'm just going to have the one probe and we're going to dance down the chassis. All right. Next, let's talk about meters. For meters, I would highly suggest use a manual range meter. Don't use an auto range meter because what happens with those things, if you're looking for say 200 volts, but it's actually dead, but there just happens to be 200 millivolts floating on that circuit, you're going to call it good. All right, so what I'd recommend is this B and K 391A, as you can see, it's got a manual range switch. So you could say, hey, I want to measure from zero to 20 volts DC. That's what you're going to measure. Okay, so it's kind of a safeguard. Now, if you don't want to spend a lot of money, you can pick up these Beckmans. This is a 310. This is an industrial meter. And back in the day, they're like 400 bucks. You can get these on eBay for like 20 to 30 dollars great meter this is my go-to meter now let's take a look at the leads test leads okay there's a lot of them out there and a lot of you guys home brew them however there's a hazard there okay good rated test leads you can look this up on the web they have a lot of different symbols and markings on them that show you the breakdown voltage of the insulation of the wire and the test probe remember you're going to be working around 500 volts and if your leads are only rated at 300 volts you're gonna get zapped so don't do this with homebrew leads spend the money buy yourself a decent set of test leads fluke sells them B and K sells them and I'm sure there's many other brands out there but make sure they're rated for the job all right finally before we start get yourself a little dummy load okay I don't like to test with a speaker because anytime you move a lead you're gonna hear little pops and snaps and it's gonna scare the crap out of you right so this is a little 4.7 ohm resistor on a little RCA connector that I'm going to plug in instead of the speaker. Because at this point, we're not testing the speaker to see what it sounds like. We don't care. We're looking at voltages. So for the presentation, we're going to measure from the 5Y3 high voltage line, and we're going to work our way back to the preamp section. Okay? I'm not going to verify these AC voltages. We're only going to concentrate on DC voltages. So right off the 5Y3, there's the main feed. We're going to walk across each of these caps. We'll hit the tubes, so on and so forth, and verify that everything is looking normal on the amp. Now, I'm not going to keep cutting back and forth with this schematic, so what I'd recommend is find yourself one online, print it off, and then we'll go through the board here, and you should be able to kind of walk down it as I walk down the chassis. Well, here we go. You can see I've got my ground lead of the meter hooked to the chassis. I'm not going to touch that lead. I'm only going to use this lead with my right hand. 
if you see my left hand in the video, then you can call me out, all right? So what we're going to do, let's start the power supply. So there's our 5Y3 rectifier tube, and you can see it's got a wire that goes over here to the 1K, and then it goes over here to the filter cap. So that's the main section of the filter cap, which should be about a 40 microfarad section. And you can see we've got 417 volts, right? Then you're going to go through the 1K resistor, and this is actually the screen circuit that's going to the 6V6. So you can see the voltage is a little bit less because you're getting a little bit of a drop across the 1K. Then we're going to a 10K resistor, and this is your preamp circuitry, okay? So there's a voltage for the preamp tube, about 385 volts. Once again, you're dropping some voltage across this 10K resistor. Now this amp has not been touched. This thing is 100% stock, and you're going to see when you look at your schematic, for example, this high voltage here, according to Fender schematic, should be about 360 volts. You're like, well, why is it at 415? Well, the reason is, is this was designed back when the line voltages to your house were much lower, probably around 110 to 115 volts. These days we're up to about, what, 123? So that is going to increase this DC level that you're seeing. All right, now let's take a look at the 6V6. Okay, the most important pins on that 6V6 are your screen and plate voltage. Your plate voltage comes in to pin 3, which is right here. It's a blue line coming off of your output transformer. Now, I'm not able to get a real good connection because some joker sprayed this gliptol all over the socket. I don't know why. Maybe the socket was replaced in the past. Anyway, here's your plate voltage which is about 402 and here's your screen voltage about 411 that's great now let's go and take a look at the cathode voltage right? which is off of this 470 ohm resistor if you look right there got about 21 volts okay now on their schematic they're saying about 19 so you know we're within tolerance now here's what I want to point out let's envision this 470 ohm like a current shunt okay because one half of it actually goes right to ground and the other half goes up here to the cathode of the tube which is pin 8 and what they're doing here is they're setting the current through that tube so that is your bias for this class A amp so if you were to go here let's say and you didn't have 21 volts let's say you had nothing zero volts Okay, well, you could say, well, either this resistor has opened or my tube is not conducting, so I'm not pulling current through that resistor. Okay, or let's say you get on here and it's 10 volts rather than 21. Then you can say, oh, well, my output tube must be weak, right? Because if it's not pulling enough current, the voltage is going to go down. You're measuring it like a current shunt, so it is a wellness check for that 6V6. All right, the other situation I want to point out is sometimes people bring me in these amps and the 6V6 is going warp drive. It's hotter than hell. What happens is, is this little cap here that's strapped across a 470 ohm resistor, they short. And when they short, this resistor now is doing nothing because it's being bypassed by a shorted cap, which makes the current through the output tube go wild. So if you have one of these amps, and you see that tube is like really glowing, burning up, shut it off and take a look at that cap and that resistor. Now let's go over to the 12AX7, all right? And if you look at the schematic, you'll see you got a lot of pins here to contend with. But first off, let's look at the plate voltage on the tube, which comes off of these two 100K resistors. So you remember when I was back over here, watch my meter, you had that, uh, there it is, 385 volts coming off that 10K resistor. Well, it goes on these wires and comes right there. Okay, so there's your 385. Then it goes through each of these 100Ks to the plates of the 12AX7. So if you go here, you'll see you dropped about 100 volts there, and you dropped about the same there. Okay, so these two resistors are alive and well. Okay. Now, if you go over here, you're going to see this cap 
and a 1.5K resistor. Now if you measure right there, that's pretty good, about 1.9 volts. And if you go over here, there's another one, which goes to pin 3, once again, about 1.9 volts. So going back to what we talked about on the 6V6, if you consider these as little current shunts, because the 1.5Ks actually go to ground, and then it's the voltage here that's going to the cathodes of the 12AX7, right? So if the 12AX7 is weak, you might only see a half a volt here instead of 1.5, 1.9, whatever we're seeing, which indicates a weak 12AX7. And then again, if you go here and you get zero, maybe the 12AX7 is open, or maybe one of this little cap here is shorted, right? Because I've seen that in the past too. That's why it's very important to give these things a really good visual inspection before you get in here and do any work. Because usually if something is smoked, you're going to see evidence of it. So pretty much we know that the 12AX7 is operating, and so is the 6V6. Voltages in here look decent. Like I say, they're not going to actually match that schematic. But you'll be able to tell if something is like totally missing or totally whacked out as in comparison to the schematic. Now the other thing I want to show you, you've got these capacitors here, okay? These are your, to your two uh, tone capacitors. So you got a 0.1, this is a 0.047, that's 0.022. These two guys are your tone for your base control, all right? And you got this little stupid cap here and that's your trouble, all right? Now here's what you want to see and here's what you don't want to see. You can go here, you're going to see some of that plate voltage sitting on those tone caps, okay? This is part of your tone circuit, that, that little resistor right there and these two caps. But when you go over here, you better not see any voltage, okay? It should be zero. There should be no voltage there because this is just signal. If you go on either side of these caps which are going up to the tone pots and you see voltage here, I don't care if it's one volt, change those caps because they are leaking, all right? Same goes for this guy. This is the 0.022, which comes off the plate of the 12AX7, and this is the final signal that's going to the grid of your output tube, okay? So same deal. If you go right here, you'd see your plate voltage. If you go over here, you better not see any voltage, all right? It's zero. That's good, because that output tube wants to see zero on a Class A amp, okay? It just wants to see signal. If you see voltage there, the bias on that output tube is going to go nuts. And it's going to smoke it. So once again, you see voltage here, change that cap. So during this testing, I actually had this little 4.7 ohm resistor simulating the speaker. Okay, and This is very important that you at least have a resistor plugged in rather than the speaker to make the output transformer happy because it can be damaged because it's an impedance match it's looking for. All right. So very important, make yourself one of these dumb things, cost you like a buck, all right? Now if I were to plug in this speaker, let me give you an example of what you would get while you're in here measuring things, okay? And this is why I don't do it. Bring up the volume a little bit for the heck of it. Let it warm up. I'm gonna get in here, get that left hand out of there, right? And when I'm in here measuring, because the meter has some loading, you're going to hear it, all right? Which may scare the crap out of you, all right? So that's why I don't do it. You guys always see me use a dummy load and a scope, and you're like, why? Why doesn't he just hook up a speaker so we can hear it? There's why. So there concludes the Fender Champ wellness check, okay? And it appears to be all right voltage-wise. I'm going to do another video and walk through it with an oscilloscope. We'll do a little bit of signal tracing. And I want to do all that while this amp is still stock. Because I have not touched it yet. So you're getting to see it as I see it. Hope this video is good for you. And if you have any questions about the right type of meter to buy. Or a certain voltage that you may have issues with. Get a hold of me. Hope you liked it. See you again.